to that news that Taliban fighters, some disguised as police and armed with rocket-propelled grenades, have stormed a prison in northwest Pakistan, releasing almost 250 inmates. The gunmen used loud hailers to call for some of the prisoners by name. 30 of the freed prisoners are described as hardcore militants by government officials. Well, let's uh, an analyse this a little more. With us is Barak Sina, Associate Fellow at the Royal United Services Institute. Thank you so much for coming in. What do you make of such a bold attack? Well, Sunni Islamists have clearly been emboldened across the region for multiple reasons. First of all, we have Al-Qaeda affiliates that are being sucked into Syria, sucked into Iraq, travelling there from throughout the entire region. Uh, these affiliates are offering financial and logistical support to one another. Just last year, the White House was celebrating the fact that it had significantly eroded the core of al-Qaeda's leadership and command and control, but they were warned at the same time that affiliates would eclipse the core. That's exactly what's taken place now, especially as America's had a hands-off approach to the Middle East. It's been following events rather than attempting to create events. And um, there's an organization, the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, which is made up of Al-Qaeda affiliates, where there is this logistical support being offered, spilling over from Syria into Iraq, reaching all the way up to Pakistan. And when the authorities describe some of these people who've been released as hardcore militants, uh, what are the sorts of things that they would have been involved with and how worrying is it that they're now freed? Well, they would have been involved in targeting Shias, um, targeting mosques, targeting civilian institutions. And now you're seeing as well Sunni militants that are becoming increasingly brazen and they're targeting what we would have anticipated to have been heavily fortified installations such as prisons. So they're becoming very, very emboldened and undermining the domestic governance in all these states, whether it be Pakistan, Iraq, etc. And Afghanistan too, yeah. and on some of those occasions it appears they've had help from the inside as well. Of course they have, but we see that this is a combination of events. First of all, General Petraeus's widely acclaimed counterinsurgency strategy has been undermined because that would have had to have been facilitated by continuous US involvement in the region, in Syria, when you've had a hands-off approach, all the Sunnis that you would have embraced, that you would have got on side, suddenly now they're seeing increased Shia involvement. They're not going to be on the US's side if US takes a step back. What they're going to do is going to ramp up, up attacks. So you see America wanting to repivot its attention towards Asia. You see America winding down its troops in Afghanistan and Iraq with an increasing inability of Iraqi troops on their own to actually counter these attacks. You've seen a leading from behind approach, i.e. doing nothing in Syria. So if I was an Islamist, I would be perceiving America as a paper tiger. It's which an interesting is phrase, leading doing. from behind. Just as a final thought for the Pakistani authorities, we saw a similar type of prison break, what, a year or so ago. How awkward is it that something has happened virtually exactly the same? So this is a year's, a anniver year year's anniversary. Uh, Pakistan is really a state within a state and almost a failed state at that. Uh, bear in mind that Osama bin Laden was, le was living for a year or more under the, le under the noses of the Pakistani military. So in a whole region, especially Pakistan, that is also nuclear, that has a vacuum of governance, you're going to see a proliferation of nuclear materials, terrorist organizations mutating. It's an infinitely more dangerous region. And bear in mind that that at this moment in time, the obsession of the international community is to focus on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which is a complete sideshow when you see the Sunni-Shia tensions, which is raging across the region. All right, there we have to leave it, but uh, Barak Zina, thanks very much for coming in to talk to Thank us. You. Thank you.